Looks like you got a lot of good stuff out. You doing some baking? Yeah, we're going to try to make a little bit of shortbread today. It doesn't take long and it's very simple. We're going to add two sticks of butter, one cup, which is two sticks. And it's like you, you do it room temperature. So you've had your butter out softening. Yes. One cup of confectionery sugar already got measured. And you've already sifted the sugar too. Yeah, I went ahead and sifted him a little bit. You don't have to, but you know, I just, just do. And we're going to add two teaspoons of vanilla. I always add the almond because I think the almond gives it a special taste. Oh, almond extract. Yes, one quarter teaspoon. You can add it or, or leave it, but it's much better, I think, with it. Okay, we're going to beat this all together. Well, beating's what you what you do best. That's I know true. when I was a kid, you were beating everything. Yeah, that's right. So what kind of consistency were you looking for there? Well, we just wanted to mix it all up together. We're going to add two cups of all-purpose flour. Okay, well, let's go ahead and sift him and get him ready. And we're not going to add any kind of other liquid other than that vanilla. And we're going to add that gradually. You don't want to dump it at once. We're going to add it gradually. And we have two cups of sifted flour here. We're just going to gradually add a little bit at a time so we can bring it all together. So you're just doing it gradually so you can get it mixed in evenly. Yeah. Yeah, you don't want to pour the whole thing in at once. Okay, now we have all of our flour added. Sometimes if it seems so dry, you know, you say, well, that stuff's not going to come together. You can take like a, a quarter teaspoon of water and just kind of sprinkle it around if you have to. But other than that, you know, it will, it's always came together for me. I've never had to do it. I don't, I think shortbread has a, it's easy to make, has a good flavor to it. Usually everybody likes a little piece of shortbread. Yeah, everybody likes shortbread. You know. It'd be straight up cray not to like shortbread. That's yeah, true. Let's add a few almonds, a few the, the almonds we cut up. Nuts know. and shortbread adds a little bit of flavor and then it adds a little texture too. Yeah, you don't want, you know, a mountain of them, but. Just a wee little bit. You're making me nervous with your hands so close to that. Well, Why do you know, put your hands so close? Well, because I don't want it to like, you know, how it is and glue huh? all over the place. I'd rather have my fingers than a clean you know? counter. So, uh, <laughs> I hope I don't get my fingers. I tell you okay, what, let's see. I mean, part of me wants you to, you know, not hurt yourself. And then another part of me is thinking, well, that could be a pretty viral video. You know, grandma loses her fingers. I hope not. I hope not too, really. There's like 80% of me that doesn't want that to happen. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad. Yeah, and this is kind of a turbo machine anyway, so he, he does take off. You take your digits right off, huh? Yeah. Just looking for something that'll pat together and stick together. And if yeah. it was overly dry, then you would just take maybe a teaspoon of water or a quarter teaspoon yeah, to and bring sprinkle it together. over it. Okay. All right, let's go over to the uh, to Dr. Frankenstein's work table over here. This batch will make two rounds of shortbread. Uh, you put them in cake pans. These are terrific cake pans to use because they're easy to work with because the bottom lifts out. So That's like magic. I feel like I'm at a fancy kids party. You, know. you like to use parchment paper, but you don't have any parchment I, paper. Yeah, I always use parchment paper, but today I ran out, so I just used a little bit of oil to coat the bottom of them, but very, very lightly. Very so, lightly. so you've got these lightly coated with oil? Very lightly, and, and I've got the rounds also coated okay, inside. Okay, so you've lightly coated your pan with a little bit of oil, but if you didn't have the... But if you had parchment paper, you'd rather use that. Yes. You can work with this. You know, it's not too wet where it's running over, and it's not too dry where it's falling apart. 
Now well, what we need to do is divide our dough. So you got to pull out your fancy pants scale. Yeah, let's. You're just gonna let's divide measure. it in half. Yeah, I'm maybe. Getting, see, okay, we got twelve and seven eighths, and I can tell you that's not gonna be close. Okay. Well, you did 11, that very well. Looks like you could be at the uh, grocery eight. store deli working. Yeah. I don't think they want me. Being awful precise. Well, yeah, I try to get him pretty close, you know. Are you going to cook them together? Yeah, I'm going to put both of them at the same time. So you want to get them the same size so they'll cook evenly. Yeah. Okay, now we're going to take our pan, if we can grab him here. You can use your hands, or you. I got this little roller here. We're going to roll and try to roll him as close to the edge, getting, getting pretty even, you know. You don't want no big lump in the middle and then nothing over here, so you try to... And you didn't put any hard. flour on the bottom of your pan. No, I didn't put no you flour. You didn't put any flour on the dough. No, I just I just kind of put a little bit on my on my thick wheel for a second to go, you know, where to roll a little bit easier. Well, that looks like a cookie of my dreams right there. I'm going to take this fork, kind of make a little pattern. Now, why do you put the holes in there? Well, you need it for air holes. You know, it's like a cake pan. I mean, it's like a... A pie crust you, you need to aerate him if not well you know he'll probably puff up in the middle and he'll puff up over here on this side you know plus that he makes kind of a nice little pattern so you're going all Picasso on him yeah I'm gonna put him all the way well this isn't Picasso what is this this is uh oh is this pointillism this looks like something that's getting ready to go up in the Louvre cooking museum okay how about that that looks nice pick him up I'm going to slide him in here. We're going to grab this next one here and get him ready. It doesn't take long to make and, you know, be a nice little snack for the children when they come home from school. Yeah, or, or me. Uh, if the kids don't get here in time, well, that's life. You know, kids need to learn about the consequences of not being on time. If kids come home and there's just the, the memory of shortbread, well, that's just a life lesson. I guess. We've already seen your pointillism, well, Meemaw. Don't that's you? okay. Why don't you do something impressionistic? Because I'm not, uh, no impression. <laughs> okay. Uh-oh. Whatever. We went for too big a word, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Anyway, we're going to make some holes. <laughs> <laughs> All righty. So you got two pans of potential shortbread. So you've got your oven already preheated at 300 degrees? Already. It's ready to roll. I'm going to put him in, both of them, like, side by side. Boom, boom, boom. And that's why it's important to have them of equal sizes. Okay, and we'll let you do the taste test. Okay, okay. Right. Well, that sounds like a good plan. Okay. Beep, 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 beep. It's turning, turning brown around the edges here. Just a little bit, but you're not going to get much color on this shortbread, right? No. Shortbread isn't, isn't real colorful. Enough. We need to cut this while it's still warm. Because if you wait till it gets cold when you cut it, it will crumble up. That's why I like these little pans, because you can just like pick them up and slide them right out. Well, cut some little wedges. You can cut big wedges, small wedges. Well, I might not be the best cutter, but... Well, you know, they kicked you out of math class when you were a kid, didn't they? Yeah. But you excelled in art. You were the number one finger painter. Yeah. It's true. They used to call her Old Finger Painting Mary. <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just put them on the, the rack. See, and it comes right off of there. It smells wunderbar, so we'll just let these cool down, and then we'll have them in a little bit after they've firmed up. Yeah, we'll let him let him cool. Okay, and we'll see what happens to it, and I hope it's, I hope it turns out good. Beep, 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 beep. Mm. How do you like a cookie that's uh, shaped like a pie? Buttery goodness is the most important part. You ready to retire the cookies and play some cards? Yep, I'm ready. Ready to lose your shirt? I'm ready. All righty. Well, if you lose, cheers. Then you got to get going on another batch of cookies because I don't think these are going to make it much longer. Okay. You know, if you want to give this recipe a try, we'll have the recipe up over at myfoodchannel.com. Go over there and print it out. Check out all our recipes. You know, we got a few other Mama Red Buck recipes. I'll have them linked around here. Uh, but thanks for watching and subscribing. And we'll see you in the future. Bye bye.